Hello and welcome to the Wine Turtle YouTube channel. My name's Jamie and I'll be your host as we taste and review popular wines from around the world and explore the grapes and the winemaking techniques that make them special. If you've not been here before, please consider subscribing. It would help the channel out enormously and it would mean the world to me. It only takes a second. So today we have an incredibly popular wine. This is a wine I see in almost every country I visit, in almost every supermarket. It's the Yellowtail Cabernet Sauvignon. So this is one of the cheapest wines you'll find. Uh, a regular size bottle costs seven or eight dollars and you really don't get much cheaper. I managed to find a box containing four of the Yellowtail wines in miniatures like this one. So this is the first one I'll review, the Cabernet Sauvignon. And we'll have the Chardonnay, the Shiraz and the Merlot coming up in future videos soon. So let's get tasting. So Yellowtail released very few details about how their wines are made. I mean, I think that's a good move on their part. They're producing such cheap, such affordable wine on such a large scale. They're obviously cutting corners and um, keeping production costs really low. So yeah, best not make that public. What that means though, is that I know very little about how this wine is made. I know it's from Southeastern Australia and I know it's from 2021. And that's about it. So let's see if we can find out a bit more about it. So it's a deep ruby, but there's a little opacity there. You know, perhaps not as bold as you might expect a Cabernet Sauvignon to be. Tears move relatively quickly down the side of the glass, backing up my claim. So let's see how it smells. Jammy fruit, blackberry, black currant, a little bit of oak and vanilla, but it's uh, a very approachable nose, sweet smelling, very fruity. Fruit comes through with a bit of pepperiness and a little bit of chocolate on the finish there. The mouthfeel is a bit thin. It um, feels uh, unsubstantial. Yeah, I don't know what the cause of that might be, especially when you consider this is a wine that is sweet, a, a little bit sweet, a dry wine, but more residual sugar than than is, uh, than is normal. So you'd expect that residual sugar to add a bit of body, but it's just not there. Uh, the body is disappointing. It's fruity, approachable, but a little bit sickly. The, the tannins and acidity, the structure of the wine, it just isn't there to, to support that, that level of sweetness. So you end up with a wine that a bit cloying. Not a glass of wine I really look forward to finishing, to be honest. Um, a little bit disappointing. So what about a score? Well, I have a couple of big issues with this wine, which lead me to score it quite low. The first issue I have is the sweetness. It's just a little bit too sweet and it doesn't have the structure to get away with that little bit of extra residual sugar. There's very little acidity, the tannins aren't big enough. It just lacks balance and it ends up being cloying, a little bit sickly 
it just leaves me with a little bit of an unpleasant taste in my mouth, to be honest. My second problem is the mouthfeel. It just doesn't have the body you'd expect the Cabernet Sauvignon to have. It feels thin in the mouth. This is especially unusual when you consider it has a bit of extra residual sugar. That extra sugar should add some body um, and a little bit more density to the palate, a bit of a thicker mouthfeel. So it, this just doesn't add up. It's, it's really unusual actually. So my score is going to be five and a half out of 10. It's not a wine I recommend while it's fruity. I guess it's approachable and it will appeal to some. For just $3 more, you can have something like the Apothic Cab, which is quite a nice wine at just $10. And yeah, although this is really cheap, it's not very nice actually. So that's why I'm gonna score it quite badly. I'd love to know what you think. Please leave a comment down below and I hope you join me for my next wine review soon. Goodbye.